good luck to you. Now, our You Know Best campaign continues now. You'll recognise my next guest. Ten years ago, Chris Hallinger found a lump in her breast and sent this Facebook message after being told it was nothing to worry about. Eight months later, though, Chris found out it was indeed breast cancer. She went on to set up the charity Copperfield, an amazing charity which encourages women, young women in particular, to check themselves. And ever since, she's been a regular face on our show. You were so young when you were diagnosed. What age were you again you got diagnosed? Um, 23. I was so yes. incredibly young. I was ignoring my symptoms, wasn't checking my boobs. My GP thought I was too young to get breast cancer. I was, you know, told it can't be cured because it was found late. If you had managed to get diagnosed earlier, things might have been very different. Yeah. I'm living with cancer and it's, and it, for me, it's a doable thing. You are a miracle. <laughs> I just keep myself far too busy to think about cancer. I'm too busy for cancer. Just if you're worried, get it checked out. You can spread a lot of boob love. We educate people about early detection and getting to know your boobs now. This is what it's all about, early diagnosis can save lives. Well, thanks to Chris's campaigning, the government has announced that cancer education is to be made part of the school curriculum. She joins me now. You must be so proud of that. I know you've been fighting for that for a while. Yeah, it's been... Yeah, a long old slog. We started campaigning for that in 2013. Right. And um, we always wanted, well, it should, it, it, it makes total sense for kids to be educated with this information, to, for them to get to know their bodies and know about the signs and symptoms of cancer from a younger age, so that it's always detected mm. early and that they know their bodies. And um, but yeah, we've been, we've been campaigning and then in July, the Department of Education finally announced that they were reforming sex education and health education was going to be made mm. compulsory in primary and secondary schools from 2020. And part of the guidance, finally, the word cancer is on it. Mm. And I mean, when we found this out, we <laughs> went a little bit mad. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was one of those big sort of achievements. And you yeah, think, yeah. oh, you know, we're going to start this campaign called Copperfield. Mm. That was 10 years ago, and then suddenly wow. these big things happen along it's the way. huge. I mean, this will save lives. Yeah. It will absolutely yeah. save lives. It's astonishing. It's already sort of happening because our Dr Hillary, he is out and about in a school in Buckinghamshire in St Mary's. They've already begun that, the sort of lessons that Chris yeah. is talking about, haven't they, Hillary? Good morning to you. Good morning, Lorraine. Yeah, Chris has achieved so much, so proud of her. And as a doctor and as a parent, I think what's going on in this school alone is absolutely amazing. Head of Support for Learning is Mrs Bonnie Taylor. Good morning. How important is the education about health and cancer uh, that's been going on in the school? For the last six years, I've been very passionate about including breast health and breast cancer on my curriculum. Um, I can really see the value it gives my learners and the difference it will make to them in their future lives, I know, will be phenomenal and it's really important that they get this message at an early age. Absolutely. It's a phenomenal what you're doing and I know it's working because the students tell me so. Uh, good morning Lily. What do you think about the importance of the education you're getting on this subject? Well three years ago I had these lessons and recently I'd found a lump so these lessons made me really aware of how to check and what to check for. So. Good, and everything's okay? Yes. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Now, Annika, what do you think? Agree? Yes, I think these lessons have helped me to become more confident in speaking to someone if I need help. That's what it's all about. And, you know, this isn't just a theory for, for these students. They are touched by it. A, a teacher here has been uh, affected by breast cancer, as is a parent, Caroline. You look so young to have had breast cancer, but here you are, and that was 10 years ago, the diagnosis. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so um, pleased that Lucy's going to get this um, education. It's so important because early diagnosis is everything. And I'm just so pleased that she's going to get this education, this knowledge, that she will grow up and be able to check her body and be aware of any changes to it. So Th I'm just really pleased. A excellent. Thank you, Caroline. Stay well. And I know this is very meaningful for you and, and you'll see how important this is. One in eight women in the course of their lives will develop breast cancer at some stage. It's all about early detection, awareness, going to see the doctor, getting it checked out because early detection, early diagnosis saves lives. Thank you, girls. Bye-bye from us. Lorraine, oh, Chris, keep you. up the good work. Thank you so much. It just shows you it's amazing, isn't it, what's yeah. happening? Because there's all these little pockets of enlightenment all over yeah. the country. But now, finally, it's yeah. all going to be joined up. Yeah. And I, everybody will I, get that chance. It's amazing. And I was just so proud to see that school because they were part of the pilot that we did yes. to understand whether this, well, A, would work. Mm. And um, they were so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. and. It was, I just love it. Love seeing that. <laughs> it's great, isn't yeah, it, for all the generations? Great. How are you doing? Because you look, you never change. <laughs> you always look the same. And I know that you're always very positive. Yeah. But how are you just now? Um, very tired, because I had some train delays last night. But apart from that, <laughs> I'm, 
I'm feeling pretty good at the you moment. You okay? Yeah, it's been it's been a turbulent year of um, new progression of disease and having to, you know, switch things up with treatment, say yes to treatment, say no to treatment, and find a new path. But it's right. kind of been that way for almost ten years. So it has indeed. Um, and and what, it's not. Yeah. This is the thing about cancer. One size doesn't fit all. Mm. You know, you've got to sort of be, and, and it's all about knowledge, isn't yeah. it? You've got to make yourself as, as clued up as you possibly. You can. absolutely do. Yeah. Like, I, I do feel like a bit of an expert on the topic sometimes. And I actually met an oncologist recently who'd been in the field for a shorter time than I'd had had cancer. And I just think, oh, who knows more about the topic <laughs> than <laughs> you do? Um, and I, it's not the best, you know, it's not the knowledge that I've always ever wanted. No. But at the same time, I think it's the one, one of the main reasons I'm still alive, sure. that I've, because I've made it such a personalised... Thing for me. No, very and much so. And the campaigning you've done is, is absolutely remarkable. Yeah. And you're living with cancer. Yeah. It's not this, because I know a lot of people who have cancer or cancer touches their lives. This thing about battling, yeah. you know, it's a war, it's a fight. Is that not actually helpful at all? Uh, no, but, you know, if someone wants to use that language for their own disease and sure. their own illness, then that's absolutely fine. But it's more, I have a huge issue with when it's reported in the media, when someone has died. Whenever it's cancer, it's always that someone's lost a fight or a battle. Mm. And I find that so frustrating because it, it undoes all of the hard work they would have put in to survive. And that it undoes everything that, all the, you know, the huge steps that we've made so far. And also the life that they would have actually been quite proud of. Mm. Um, if, if anyone reports that when I, when I die. And also, we we're so scared to just say that someone has died. I know. Just the D word is just true. such a big taboo still. You're right. And we, that's, why we're, that's why we try and use any other terminology we can possibly mm. find, because we're just so scared to say that someone has died. Yeah. You know, we just say no, they've passed right. on, they've, you know, they've left us, it's gone to some magical land. Mm. But no, actually, someone has just died. And then... Um, that is how I wish to be reported on when I die. I mean, that's if anyone's going to report it. But, you know, that's what that's how it should be. I hope that. it's not for an awful long time. <laughs> no, I really, no, really do. No. And things... But life is good. I mean, you're, you're yes. living in Cornwall now. Yes, I live in You've Cornwall. You've got Beyoncé. Beyoncé is a van. Mm -hmm. It's not the Beyoncé, but it's Beyoncé is a van. Yes. And you kind of... You toddle around sort of making cakes and coffee and stuff yeah, like that. That's a I... lovely way to live. I quite yes. like that. Do you know what? <laughs> so many people come up to us in our van. Um, so I run it with my twin sister, Marin. And so many people come up to us and say, are you living the dream? Like, are you actually living the dream? And I just think, I feel like I'm living lots of people's dreams. Yes. But it's, it's actually quite attainable. I mean, not, you know, you can, you can, anyone can buy a van and be do what that. they love. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's worlds apart from anything to do with breast cancer and boobs. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I love it. We get to spend time together. We get to bake. We get to relive our German heritage because we make German style cakes. And, Fantastic. Um, and live by the beach. And speak to people who are having a nice day out. It's fantastic. And meanwhile, the work for Coffee yeah. goes on as yes, well. You know, exactly. of course it does. You know, that, and that is one of the proudest achievements for me to get to the fate, like get to the point in the charity where I could say, I'm going to hand the reins over, but for sure. still be involved with oh, some of things. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Chris, it's always a joy. Thank Congratulations you. on, on I, I mean, getting the, the government to listen and to act. And it will save lives. Thank you. It and thank really you will. for continuing to, you know, spread the boob word every October <laughs> and doing it. No, I mean, those big boobs, they are coming to Boob HQ after this month, oh, yes, by the are. way. Like, oh, yes. They are. Now. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. You can have them. Thank you. <laughs> That's great.